Okay, so you know, if you can find a greatest common divisor, James Bond's factor rather, you can sort of pull it out, that's great. But sometimes things don't have a common factor throughout. For example, let me give you the following to consider. Let's take a look at 6xy plus 9y minus 10x minus 15. Now you look at that and you say, well, gee, it looked good for a while. Like 3 was in there, the y's were in there for a while. Here we see some 5 factors, but then there's no 5 factors here. In fact, the greatest common factor out of all these terms is just 1. That's the only factor they all have in common. So if you factor out of 1, you still have the same thing, so you made no progress. So there, that simple technique doesn't really work. But there's another technique that sometimes is worth thinking about, and that's a technique called the technique of grouping. And what that means is, instead of taking out a greatest common factor across the board, if there isn't one, maybe there's a greatest common factor in just a few pieces of it, or another piece of it. And by doing that, sometimes you can actually find a factorization of your original polynomial. For example, if you look here, what you see is, well, there's a y in common here and here. And in fact, there's even some stuff here, right? A little teeny bit of stuff here. There's a 3 there and a 3 there I could pull out. But what about here? Well, I can't pull out those same things. But you notice I can pull out, if I wanted to, uh, a 5 here and a 5 here. So the idea of grouping is to sort of take a piece of it and see what the greatest common factor is you can factor out of that piece, and then do the same thing in another piece, and then see what happens. The neat thing is that sometimes something really cool happens. Let's see. So here, the biggest thing I can factor out, if you just forget about that, just group this, is going to be a 3y. Now what am I left with? Well, I'd be left with a 2x here, and then plus just 3. Again, you can always check by distributing and making sure you get exactly this back. If you don't, not good. All right, now what about here? Well, here I can, I can factor out something. I can factor out a 5. In fact, notice there's a negative sign everywhere. I'm going to factor out a negative 5. If I factor out a negative 5, what am I left with? Well, if I factor out a negative 5, the negative sign is gone. I take away a 5. That leaves me still with a factor of 2x. And remember, that negative sign now is gone. So I have to sort of undo the, the uh, distributing thing we usually do and pull out that negative sign so it becomes a plus 3 to make it 15. OK, so notice how I grouped things here and I grouped things here. But if you look at this, you see something really cool. Namely, here there's a factor of 2x plus 3. And here is another factor of 2x plus 3. So in fact, we now have sort of this big blob, and this big blob is really a common factor both in this term and also in this term. So now I can take that big blob and actually factor it out of everything. And let's do that and see what happens. If I do that, look what I get. I factor out the 2x plus 3, and what am I left with? Well, here I'm just left with that term, the 3y. And here I'm just left with a minus 5. You can check. Take this blob, like we talked about before, and distribute to here, I get that. You distribute to here, I get that. So in fact, look, I factored this. This was an awful thing. It had no common factors outside of 1. And yet I was able to factor it by doing little pieces at a time and grouping the things. Now, the grouping method doesn't always work, but it's a great thing to think about and a great thing to try, especially if you have terms that sort of have similar things in pairs. Great thing to try. This is a little key. Let's try one last example so you can see this in action. Let's suppose that we have 15 minus 5a squared minus 3b squared plus a squared b squared. Now, a great concern is to say, gee, if I'm going to try the grouping, how do I know how to group the stuff? Well, it turns out that if this thing is going to fall due to grouping, if you're going to be able to factor this due to grouping, it really won't make much of a difference. So anything that you see here, for example, you may say, look at these two terms. I can group them and factor out an a squared. And then notice that what remains, I can factor out a 3 here. So that actually would be fine. Or you may say, look at these two terms. I can factor out a 5 here. And these two terms, I can factor out a b squared. Completely different factorizations. But actually, all factorizations lead to Rome. So we should actually be OK no matter what we do. What should we try? Um, how about just for fun, we sort of mix things up a little bit. And let's factor these two things together and then pull out something there. So here I can factor out an a squared from this term and this term. Now what about what the remaining terms? Well, the remaining terms I can actually factor out. This, this looks like a 3. So there's a little 3 in there, and then I can take out that 3 there. 
And let's see what happens if we do that. So if we take out the 3 here, that would require a 5 to get a 15. And don't forget that negative sign. Boy, oh boy, a great place to make mistakes is to forget and drop negatives. So minus, the 3 is gone, but I need a b squared. And if we distribute, I get that term. I get the purple. Now what about this stuff? Well, what am I going to factor out here? Here I'm going to factor out an a squared. When I factor out the a squared, I have a minus 5 here. And then here I have a plus b squared. And now we look and see, is there a common factor? No, it close. 5 minus b squared, and this is minus 5 plus b squared. It looks so close. They look almost the same. In fact, they look like they're just off by a little. In fact, they are the same, except for a minus sign. So let me actually factor out a minus sign from here. If I do that, now it's sort of weird to factor out a minus sign. You go, why do you factor out a minus sign? Well, it turns out that really leads us to something neat. If I factor out a minus sign, this plus would become a minus. And now if I pull out a minus sign, all these signs should switch. Remember, when you take out a minus or multiply by a minus, everything switches. So this now becomes a 5, whereas this now becomes a minus b squared. Not sure? No problem. Just push it back in. If you put that minus sign back in, it's a minus 5, and don't forget to distribute a plus b squared. Looks great, and then I have a plus there. Perfect. But now I've got a blob. 5b squared is here, and 5b squared is here. So I can now factor that common thing out of the whole thing. So just pull that out, and what am I left with? If I pull that out, I'm left with, well, I'm pulling it out first. And what am I left with? I'm left with a 3 here and a minus a squared here. So look, this can actually be factored, even though it looks sort of awful, as this product. Notice that I did a very bizarre grouping. You might want to try to do the exact same problem, but now group these two things together and group these two things together and factor out their common factors. You'll actually get the same answer, believe it or not, even though the middle, the middle steps will be different, but still correct. Anyway, that's the technique of grouping. When you can group and it works, do it.